Welcome to the Asbestos Knowledge Empire. What does asbestos management mean to you? I used to really struggle with the asbestos management at my site, but now it's a breeze. It used to be really expensive. I was paying loads, but now I've got my asbestos power team in place. It's so much easier. Asbestos could be a pain in the ass if not handled right. We had to stop the job because asbestos was discovered. Now we don't have that problem. Asbestos management is easier than you think. Asbestos management. Be proactive, not reactive. Think about asbestos first, not last. And now your hosts, best-selling authors and asbestos experts, Ian Stone and Neil Munro. Welcome to the Asbestos Knowledge Empire. I'm Ian Stone. I'm Neil Munro. So today we're talking about due diligence and why it's so important before purchasing a, a property. I've set the scene. We recently helped somebody with a uh, purchase of a property and they, they nearly, nearly made a big faux pas in buying the property without getting an asbestos survey done. Now, this property was a, a huge country uh, country estate type property and wrongly, they, they believed that there was no asbestos at the property and the kind of nobody had advised them of it or anything along the way. Uh, building surveys had been carried out and as usual, there was kind of little, well, there might be some asbestos comments in their standard terms and conditions. But last knockings that they called and said, could we could we have a look at the place? And within the boiler room there, uh, there was a, a lot of asbestos items. I'm talking asbestos insulation, asbestos insulating board. And this pipe work, it didn't only sit within the that actual basement boiler room. Uh, it went throughout the property. And... On the face of it, it didn't appear that there was any asbestos there because it was a very old property. It was grade one listed, um, there's timber panelling everywhere, all the rest of it. So kind of rightly and wrongly so, to, to kind of a, a lay person, if you like, you, you would look at the property and go, well, there, there's nothing here. It was built donkeys years ago, hundreds of years ago. So there's no asbestos. The building surveyors haven't picked anything up and have not recommended it. It's part of the English heritage, grade one listing, all the rest of it. So you kind of, you would think, well, yeah, it's too old. Um, however, like I say, that luckily they they were advised by a friend um, to just get it checked out. What, what, do you know what I mean? What, what's the worst that can happen? Just get it checked out. Give Acorn a call. So they called us and we had a look at the property. And like I say, we found a lot of asbestos there. Now... This property was like a, a million pounds worth of investment for um, the, the buyer. However, to have that asbestos actually dealt with, they were looking at four hundred thousand pounds in asbestos removal costs. Because one, what was needed to happen at the property was a lot of extensive works, um, and two, the asbestos was just in such a, a poor, poor condition. It was literally the only thing, the only last resort that could could be left. Yeah, nothing else could be do could be done with that boiler room, could it? No, exactly. So the, the choice was either shut the door, um, never go in there, or get it remediated. Yeah, which when, when you buy a, <clears throat> a, a million pound property for your family... Yeah, you don't it, want to be locking locking areas off, do you? No, exactly. And like I say, the money that kind of they were looking at, it, it was the million pound investment of the house. Yeah. And then there was probably a million pounds worth going into the house from the English Heritage Grade 1 listing side of the fence. However, £400,000 minimum for asbestos. It's it's not a small sum of money, nearly no, half a million pounds. Not. Definitely not. And sometimes people do get caught out with that. Of They tend to budget, particularly in this kind of scenario where... Okay, this is this is large scale domestic, but your budget for the, pro- the you know you you kind of set your limit, don't you, for buying a property? It's, yeah. Um, you know, you, you look at the properties within your price range, and then know. the estate agents show you the ones just outside your yeah, price range. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. <laughs> so you you kind of looking at it from a you know you probably maxing your budget out. You're probably looking at what do we actually need? Oh, does it need a new kitchen, bathroom, all that sort of stuff? People are not looking at asbestos, are they? And when you're talking about asbestos like this, you know, the extent, the condition, the type of material that's in this property, um, it's going to blow anyone's budget out of the water. Yeah, exactly. Where, where you might be looking at this property as a good deal becomes a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. It could, you know, push you over the edge yeah, of, and, of... And that was it. That was how this this was viewed. Yeah. The, the, the property at a million pounds, believe it or not, is a steal. It's a bargain. However... When you incorporate the 
all the listing works that need to happen to it. Yeah. It kind of, well, that's a normal price for that property. But then when you throw another half a million on it, well, that's an exorbitant amount and you'd be paying over the odds. And like you say, they, um, I mean, long and short of it is they walked away from this deal because of this. Yeah. Because that half a million pounds was way, way, way over their budget of what could be afforded. So it was a deal breaker. And that's the thing. That's obviously the the big end of the scale, the huge end of the market. But if you bring that back to, I don't know, smaller, normal houses, so to speak, yeah. that we all live in, flats, apartments, two beds, three beds, things like that, have asbestos in. You can have similar issues and similar problems. If you have a... It applies to any property, really, yeah. isn't it? Even a commercial property. I'm just trying to think of an example. I mean, if... If you've got texture coating that's badly damaged or a garage roof that's badly damaged on your yeah. on your property, you might not factor in that, well, you, you're going to need a couple of thousand pounds to get that fixed and a new roof put on. Yeah. I'd even argue, even if it's in a good condition, because if you're looking, you know, if this is your lifetime house, chances are someday you're going to be doing some sort of renovation, whether that be even, re, you know, if you're talking about texture coating, ceiling, our texture mm-hmm. ceiling, at some point, you might get bored of that <laughs> texture coating. Well, you may want to put new light fittings in. You may want to, do you know what I mean? It's going to be some sort of work that's going to happen. 100%. I mean, if, if you look at interior design over the last few years... Yeah, everyone but, wants open plan, don't they? Everyone wants open plan. People have gone away from the stipple texture coating mm-hmm. arted, uh, Artex Just effect. It smooth. Everybody wants it smooth. And for that to happen, well, the plasterer, before he does it, needs to make sure that that substrate is stable. So... All the Artex will be scraped off back to a, a surface that's firm and stable. Yeah. So for them to do that, well, that needs to be, to be done by a asbestos professional because not any plasterer can just work on asbestos texture coating. And there's a cost implication for that and the cost to be factored in. And then when you look at it, it's like, well, after it's been scraped, it will then need to be sealed before the plasterer can actually plaster that material. So again, you're, you're factoring in two costs that you hadn't thought of. And that's just for one thing. That's just for getting your texture coating and your ceilings uh, nice and smooth in the house. Um, there's other things like some houses have warm air heating systems that are donkey's years old now. They're not the most efficient. Most of them are redundant now, aren't they? Yeah, the, and that's it. They're, they're not effective. So to upgrade your heating system... Yeah, you can look at radiators, things like that, or you can look at more advanced versions of those, but you may need to have that warm air heating unit stripped out of the house. Mm. And again, that is going to cost thousands and thousands of pounds because most of the time they were lined with asbestos insulating board and this goes through every single wall in the property up into the loft. And to remove all of that, essentially, you'd be putting airlocks on the front of of the the door and a negative pressure unit on the back door, the house itself becomes an asbestos enclosure because that's the only way that you can access everything fully. Yeah. If you just think of the cost implications of that, and then you've got to put everything back, all the walls that have taken out so you can actually access the warm air units and all the rest of it, it's not pennies. Yeah, definitely. And and also, like, sometimes what people don't think of is um, the asbestos materials in there, you may even plan... Um, well, I'm happy with that series. I'm never going to do anything with it. Um, I'm happy to take that risk. But what what happens when something goes wrong? Now, how many times do we get called out where you've got a leaking bathroom onto an asbestos ceiling? How many times have we been called out where there's been a fire and there's fire damage to these properties? And again, it just creates that such a bigger job to actually take care of. Rather than just patch repairing a, a ceiling, quite easily by a plaster or general maintenance person, you're having to get in specialist people. Yeah, it's a so huge undertaking. Take, take care of that. One, one thing we, do, we haven't mentioned is, is floors. Mm-hmm. There's well, floor tiles and uh, special products on floors where everyone likes to change their floor, whether mm-hmm. that be carpet, lino, tiles. Well, at some point... And, and, it, and it's not a long cycle, right? So yeah. we, were, we were looking at some photos yesterday, weren't we? Yes. Um, for, for, the, for the new gallery that's coming out. Now, some of these photos are in older properties built sort of 20 years ago, and they were still installing brown asbestos floor tiles 20 years ago in properties. Yes. Brown. I mean, yeah. 
Like horrible no, colour. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody. I mean, they're not selling that stuff at B and Q and Home Base anymore. No, it's gone out of fashion. It was a big fan of beige, weren't it? We were like, yeah. beige was a big colour. Beige, <laughs> be- beige and brown were big colours. Definitely beige. Yeah, beige was probably <clears throat> the biggest. It's just that brown was the disgusting. It, they're just vile, <laughs> absolutely vile. But you're right. That's the thing. And as as times change, people do change their flooring, and these yeah. things need to be considered. Yeah, you you more likely to change a floor than. I see, don't you? Yeah, instance. definitely. No, that's um, very true. Uh, going back to your point about commercial properties, again, that's a, that's a big thing to consider because, as a commercial investment for your business, well, you're not going to be in there for five minutes. You're going to be in that premise for a number of years 20, yeah. 30, 40 years. Yeah. And there's a lot to <clears> consider. <throat> so, one, it's the duty to manage applies. So, you need to manage that asbestos. You need to make sure your workers are safe. You've got that duty of care to make sure workers, anybody visiting your premises are safe. If you are planning on doing refurbishments, again, you've got everything we've just mentioned with, well, if there's asbestos involved, you need to account for it um, within that kind of refurbishment plans that you've got because, one, it's going to cost budget-wise a a lot more than if you had a non-asbestos property, and, two, um, it's going to be a lot longer to do. So if if you're looking to move out of your premises now and in your mind you need to be in within three months, well, yeah, to get it all redecorated and the new blinds put up and the new flooring laid so it's suitable for you to move in, yeah, that's doable in three months. But if you've got a load of asbestos in there, suddenly that three months becomes six months. So you could be signing your life away for a property that you actually can't move into because well, you can't do what you needed to do to make it fit for your purpose as a business. Yeah, the, the um, it's easier to uh, sort of kind of miss the asbestos on, in a domestic point of view, isn't it? It's easier to kind of because it's not it's not on everyone's radar, um, and it's definitely not on all the radars of all the legal teams of, when, it, when it when it comes to a domestic sort of setting. And equally on on the commercial, it still surprises me that, as you said, duty to manage. Uh, non-domestic premises this should all be in place every building should have it everything's been suitably managed from a specialist point of view so in theory everything should get handed over to the new buyer the new occupier of yep. that property um, and it still surprises me even um, when we've been doing commercial leases um, for our properties um, how asbestos is still not really it's mentioned but not kind of um, enforced or really detailed going into that sort of is everything safe is everything in place yeah is everything available for the new buyer it may mention yes you need a survey or is there a survey for the property but there's no sort of bigger picture of well what does that survey include what's actually identified in this what, property what, what does that actually done? mean yes and where is the you know the management plan for that property so this is still an issue Surrounding commercial properties. And, and that's the same on the insurance point of view with commercial properties. Um, some insurers don't ask for proof or anything. Uh, others will ask for proof. And if you're kind of in bed with an insurer and that's your insurer and you move to a property that has asbestos in, well, guess what? They might actually turn around and say, I'm sorry, we can't insure you for that property because that goes against our terms and conditions. Yeah. You're right, it, it's kind of the rarity rather than the norm. However, you, it's still something to consider, because you could end up being not insured, have a building full of asbestos, and, and that kind of investment for the business, well, that yeah. becomes very, very sour very yeah. quickly. Yeah. The other point to consider is um, all, all this documentation, whether it be in a domestic or commercial setting, um, from your legal team will be reviewed by legal people, which what are they actually looking for? Is there X, Y, and Z paperwork in place? Have yeah. we got X, Y, and Z? It's kind of a box yes ticking no. exercise. Yeah. Yes or no, that's in place. They're not actually looking at, well, what's actually in that document? What does that mean? What's actually present within these buildings and what does that mean for the occupants and the management of that property? You won't be looking at that detail and you could be buying. No, you're right. Um, you, you you feel like the legal team are signing everything off saying that's right for you as a client. Everything's in place as a client. Yeah. However, you, you're totally right. It's not, is that actually right for my client? 
Yes. Is that what my client actually wants? Is my client aware of that? Yeah, exactly. That they're not doing that. Like you say, it's just literally, is it in place? Yes, tick. And that's it. And they're kind of like moving on. The, the, the bit that they pay most attention to are, are there any tree preservation orders on the on the trees on your property? Uh, is, the, is the lay of the land and the, and the map of your property yeah. correct? Yeah. Uh, is there any covenants and stuff like exactly. that? Exactly. Is there anything like that? Is it all registered at the land registry properly? Okay, sound. Right, we've got a deal. We've got everything in place. We've got that. We've got the cash. We pay them. You get the the title deeds. Bosh, you're, you're away. But that's the problem. That's that's kind of like, I mean, yes, they're all huge elements. Don't get me wrong. They are huge elements. But the asbestos is such a huge element as well. And that's what we don't want to happen. I don't want anybody to end up with a lemon. Um, you, you, you buy a property and it just, it turns sour. Yeah. Because of this asbestos cost can cost a lot. Yeah, you, you you kind of we want to stop people walking blind into a you know into a situation where they're buying a property which one they could have got cheaper because the amount of asbestos and what condition it's in is in that property. Mm-hmm. So you, you're essentially paying over the odds to buy this problem and to kind of I like that. That's that's nice. You're you're paying to buy a problem. Yes, that's and, it. And that is that is hitting the nail on the head. You are paying to buy a problem. That, there's no other way about it. When and, you've got asbestos that's terrible. You're yeah. you're paying the privilege to buy a problem. Yeah. Whereas you know you've if you had all that information and you had it looked at properly, you've got the bargaining sort of the bargaining chips to kind of you know talk about well it's going to cost X Y and Z to make this uh, workable for me and there's a negotiation sort of point. Definitely. Um, more importantly, is you're not buying a property that could be putting you and your occupants at risk. Yeah. Exactly. Um, unknowingly, um, and we see this countless times. Um, that people buying properties are not even considering asbestos at all and end up, um, you know, financially ruined, um, worst case, and or having, you know, long sort of management processes in place to kind of deal with that on a day-to-day basis. And do you know what? You're right, because people end up financially ruined because, well, legally, there's a duty of care. So once... If you, if you buy exactly a property that, without yeah. having that knowledge, you buy that property, you learn that knowledge the hard way. You become responsible. You become responsible. And those are legal documents that like your lawyers will hold, your solicitors will hold. And then when you try and palm that off as a deal, because actually it hasn't worked, well, the, the new solicitors are going to request from your solicitors all of this information. And they're not going to withhold potentially asbestos yeah. information yeah. Yeah. Um, that they are just going to pass it straight on and then all of a sudden like i said earlier you're the one who's left holding this lemon you're the one holding the bag because well no one in their right mind would buy that property for that price to pay for that problem and that's the issue mm. and that's what we kind of don't want people to walk into and all it takes is a little it's, bit of due diligence i was gonna say it's not a difficult um, process and to it's identify. not and it's not an expensive process no in comparison not. for that peace of mind yeah yeah it's really not and it really does need considering doesn't it to buy a, a, a simple house or a flat you're looking at a few hundred pounds for a survey yeah to buy a large commercial property half a million a million five million you're looking at a, a grand couple of grand and that's the thing it does scale up of course our surveys that they do become more expensive in price in the more complex they are, the size goes up, all the rest of it. But it's not in the comparison of the cost of that property. Like a million pound site isn't going to cost you a hundred thousand pounds for a survey. And even that, I mean, that's 10%. But it's, it's a lot less than that. Like hell of a lot less. Like I'm talking a couple of, couple of grand max in the sites that I'm thinking of in my mind. Yeah, they're big sites. Though. And, and they're big sites. Yeah, that is a big site. That is a big site. site. But yeah, but th- those are the things. And, and that's that's what we want people to be aware of, that this should be part of your buying process. This should be part of your asbestos power team and your property power team. Is It should be collective and you should do this on every single one so that you don't end up burnt. And even if you only do one in your life, well, guess what? Do it and do it right because... It's better to pay out that money and get yourself sorted so that you can either move forward with that knowledge or, like the client that I spoke about earlier, walk away because it didn't work. Yeah. Right, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, remember, asbestos first, not last. <laughs>